Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, One Rental at a Time. What makes One Rental at a Time a different YouTube channel than every other one out there is I bring on experts who have focused expertise. And on Mondays, that means we bring on an attorney, Rylas Dana. How you doing, sir? Hi, awesome. Always love having these conversations. I appreciate you giving us a half hour of your very busy and valuable time each week. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Your specialty is estate planning and probate. Is that correct? That's correct. California and Arizona, that's where I practice in, in those areas, probate and estate planning. Yeah, one of the things I wanted to ask you today, just because the market's down as of this recording, the Dow's down 940, the Nasdaq's down 530. There's a lot of pain and stress out there. I was curious, in your estate planning business, does financial conditions like we are in now make the phone ring more? Or do we need to be in just a parabolic up move in your phone rings? I'm just curious if you don't know, if it doesn't change, no big deal. But I just wanted to ask. Yeah. So the um, I really don't think it affects my business too much okay. because on the probate and estate administration side, that's when someone died, right? So regardless yeah. what the market's doing, <laughs> yes. the, the kids usually want to collect <laughs> the assets. So they want some money. So that, that's my job security. But I, I would say on the planning side, <laughs> And helping people set up their estate plans mm -hmm. on, on the high end side, that probably slows down a little bit when there's, uh, I, I don't know, because it almost goes both ways, because right. some people, they might get a little bit paralyzed, like they don't want to do anything, why, mm -hmm. why the markets are bad. Uh, but there's also some people that may be motivated and say, oh my gosh, like I got to take care of my, uh, my, my financial house. Now, right. I, I should have done this earlier. I, I'm already seeing my um, my accounts go down. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure there's a good plan to to transfer things. Very cool. I just I was just curious. I didn't know I was going to ask that until I looked at my phone and saw the market down almost a thousand points. What I wanted to talk about today is both trusts and LLCs, and just kind of ask that opinion. We'll start with trusts. Uh, can you define what a trust is for folks again, uh, and then I have a couple of specific questions. Yeah. So starting with trust is what I do in my business. That's my main focus in mm -hmm. estate planning is helping. I, I would say the definition of estate planning is transferring assets from one generation to the next in the most efficient way. Mm -hmm. That exactly. means minimizing taxes and probate. So okay. a trust, it's a, it's a legal document. Mm -hmm. It's prepared by a person called the trustor or settlor. And they designate a person or company called the trustee who manages assets mm -hmm. for the benefit of the beneficiaries. Mm -hmm. So okay. the trust is a legal contract that creates those things, that creates a person to manage uh, for the benefit of another person. Mm -hmm. And the main benefit, it's, it's, it's an estate planning tool to transfer assets that allows you to uh, control them mm -hmm. and, and get different tax benefits as well. Okay. So I want to ask you a couple of scenarios because uh, I get these questions all the time. And of course, I don't answer legal questions because I'm not an attorney. That's your job. So here's the situation. I'm 40 years old. I've, I've owned my home for a decade. Uh, I now realize my immortality and I want to take care of my kids and my wife or you know whatever the situation is. And I go set up, you know, I go have a meeting with you. We create a trust. One of the first things I think you should do is move your home, which again, you've had for 10 years. So you had a loan, you've paid down, you've had appreciation, but now I have to move that into a trust. Maybe move in is the wrong word, but that's what I think it is. And should I be concerned about a due on sale clause or is there a loophole or whatever it's called uh, that makes movement to a trust completely okay, no impact? Um, so, so yeah, you want to move your house into the trust. Mm -hmm. I think move is a good word, right? You want to change the ownership of the house into the trust to allow that contract to control the home. Mm -hmm. Do you need to be concerned about the mortgage? No, no, you do not. So there's there's a federal statute that that says um, your home, your primary residence, that um, it can be transferred into a trust. They can't trigger the due on sale clause for your revocable trust. Very cool. Thank so, you for that. So no concern. No concern. It's very clear when it's a revocable trust that there's no concern. Okay. So revocable. Uh, correct. Okay. So, so would that mean irrevocable is concern? Um, for, for banks, 
uh, it, it may be a concern. Yeah, if it's okay. in an irrevocable trust. Can you explain the difference simply? So revocable generally means that you have the right to control it and freely mm -hmm. change it. Okay. And irrevocable generally means that you don't that you've given up that control, that, okay. that you can no longer change the terms of the trust. Mm. Okay. Although we can. <laughs> but, but, uh, so okay. in this in this example is a 40-year-old who plans to live another 60 years. I would come to you in most cases and have a revocable trust created because I will have life changes, all of that. Is that fair? Yeah. So let's define probate quickly. So probate okay. is the legal process to change title of an asset out of the name of the deceased. Hmm. And we want to avoid that process because it's a very lengthy process, especially in California. I think California is hands down the hardest. Uh, I mean, it's the longest, most expensive, all those things. Hmm. And people are surprised to learn. I, I think a lot of times they're surprised to learn how quickly probate will affect people. They think it's only for rich people, but 150,000 of equity is where it kicks in in California. Wow. So 150,000 of equity in real estate and you would have to go through probate. Okay. So the scenario you gave 40 year old owned a house for 10 years, they probably have that or oh. not, they're, they're, they're close to it. Yeah, no, I agree. Okay. So, um, so you did say primary home, this federal statute. So I bear to ask if I bought an investment property in my name 10 years ago, same deal. Could I move that into the trust or might that cause a uh, due on sale clause? Uh, I would say, yeah, move it in, no problem. But it's not crystal clear is what okay. I have to say. So it is, um, it, if, if you ask the bank, they're not going to clearly say, yes, you can do this. Mm -hmm. However, they rarely have an issue as long as you're getting paid. Mm -hmm. Because I, I think we can make an argument that if you create an LLC, mm -hmm. you're still controlling that business. You still control that ownership. So, mm -hmm. um, so therefore that that's at least an argument why they should not call the, the acceleration clause if you transfer into an LLC. Oh, so I'm sorry, I haven't gotten to the LLC yet. I just want to make sure we close on the trust. I own a house. It's an investment. I bought it in my name because I didn't know. Uh, now I want to put it in my trust. Just like I've moved my house. Now I want to move this duplex. So is it so still no problem for your investment properties? Okay. Whether it's you or your trust is the same thing. You or your revocable trust, no problem on the okay. mortgage. I just wanted to make sure the federal statute wasn't specific for owner occupied. It's It's either. Correct, correct. Okay, cool. I didn't know that. All right. So now the LLC, right? You, uh, we had a conversation about this a couple of weeks ago where I maybe have interrupted too much. So why don't, why don't you kind of talk about when to set them up, how to, you know, how to use them, the do on sale clause, all of that. And I will be quiet. No, I, I, I love the interruption. That, that's great. So I love uh, the, the feedback. So LLC. So, so I start with the trust and I like how you brought it up that way. So that's my main job is in estate planning. Mm -hmm. But so when, when I'm, when I'm creating an estate plan for someone and I see that they own some rental properties, I do recommend that they add a, a layer of protection is kind of how I put it mm -hmm. and create an LLC for that property. Mm -hmm. Just so you separate the ownership from your name individually into a different business. Mm -hmm. um, the way now single member owner LLC that the tax breaks, you know, Dion will say they're, they're the same. I would argue it's just a little easier for your bookkeeper. Maybe they can write off some more things if you have that separate um, entity set up. Um, but I, regardless, I like the separation, right? Mm -hmm. If someone gets hurt there, it's better that there's uh, the property is owned by an LLC instead of your name individually. Mm -hmm. And your name individually or in your trust is the same thing. Mm, okay. So that revocable trust, the general rule is if you can revoke it and freely get to it, so can your creditors. Ah, uh, that makes sense. Okay. So that's why it's it's um, it's always fine to have your primary residence rental properties owned by your revocable trust because you are the trust. They, they can freely get to it. Okay. But if you create that extra layer, that LLC, I at least have to have the conversation with people and tell them, hey, you know, if you ask your bank, they're going to tell you no. If you look deep in your contract, you'll find that acceleration clause. It is there. Mm -hmm. However, 
you know, in my experience, as long as they're getting paid, they usually don't care. Usually the mortgage gets sold, you know, three, four different times. And <laughs> yeah, it's, whoever is servicing, as, as long as they're getting paid, they don't care. Mm. Uh, but just, just understand that you can't go into the bank and say, I want, I want a written proof saying this is okay, that I can transfer this property into an LLC. You're not going to get that. Not going to get that. Yeah. One of the things I have a question about an LLC is, aren't there rules, quarterlies, or kind of processes that you really have to do? Because again, it's not as easy as just creating an LLC and there's another entity. You actually have to, what is it, act or whatever? Otherwise, you can quote unquote pierce the veil or whatever they call that. Yeah. So you have to utilize the LLC. So meaning you have to transfer, just like we talked about transferring the ownership of the house into the trust. Mm -hmm. So if you have an LLC, you have to change the ownership of the property to be owned by that LLC. Mm -hmm. So that's one step. I see a lot of times people have an LLC, but nothing's in it. <laughs> like, Whoops. It's like, great. You know, um, uh, I, I've actually rented places and they, um, the lease is with the LLC. And then I pulled up the deed and be like, hey, actually it's not, you know, just FYI, this isn't in there. I'll, I'll sign your lease, but I'm, I'm paying to the owner. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's funny. So um, for one, you got to have the property um, owned by the LLC. Mm -hmm. And then you want your lease in the name of um, that LLC as well. So you want your tenants paying rent. You want the contract with that LLC. Okay. All right. Do you, so there are any kind of rules or quarterlies or yearly summaries you have to do to actually operate it as a business? There's none of that? Uh, in most states, no. Oh, okay. But, but California, you got your annual, um, you know, seven hundred dollar fees you got to pay. Mm -hmm. Eight hundred, I think. Yeah, yeah, I think it is eight hundred now. A, yeah, I know because I have a couple, so <laughs> it's eight hundred <laughs> yeah. every year. Yeah. So yeah, um, you want to make sure your LLC is registered in whatever state it's doing business in. So I people I, I hear people oh, that's sold good. Wyoming LLCs, but they own Arizona rentals or or they have rentals in a different state. So whatever state you're in, I usually recommend to start there, right? If you have properties in in, in Minnesota, then then go talk to a Minnesota attorney and see about you know creating an LLC there. Yeah. Well, I want to be very specific about this one because this is a good question. Let's again go to my example earlier. 40 year old, but he lives in California, but he buys in Ohio. Where do I set up the LLC? Uh, like I said, so talk to an Ohio attorney. Talk, uh, yeah. talk to an Ohio attorney uh, about setting it up uh, in Ohio because you have to have it registered to do business there. Mm -hmm. And then California is probably going to try to get their hands on it too. So you got to be <laughs> careful and make sure that um, you, you keep it all in Ohio, all the rental income. and mm. So I have a bank there and... Yeah, yeah, in, in the LLC, and you want to track all that income uh, separately. Yeah, because then you could also get to the expenses, right? Cal again, so if you have California expenses, like you live here and you're writing off your office or something, I mean, does it get messy or is that more of a CPA question? Um, I would say uh, both. Yeah, that, that's going to get messy and it's for a CPA. Yeah. Because again, that might that might pull it into California, exactly. right? Exactly. Exactly. Oh, you're yeah, the deduction there, great. How much <laughs> oh, are you, are you working there? Yeah, there's this thing in uh, accounting called matching, right? They're gonna go where? There's the expense. Where's the revenue? Yeah, that's yeah. Oh, that would get messy. Yeah. Okay. Um, what else do you want to? Say? Um, I guess the other thing to just recognize today, uh, a lot of people are creating LLCs for all the right reasons. Uh, but it's very hard to get a loan. But that's not because of the LLC or the entity per se. It's because of banking, right? That's a separate consideration. That, uh, that, doesn't, that doesn't make the LLC a bad idea. That doesn't make setting up entities a bad idea. It just means banks who have the money don't want to invest in a new entity who doesn't have verifiable income, right? Usually today, two years of tax returns. Is that fair? Right, right. So... Even though you have an LLC, you're going to have to use your personal credit and talk to the banks to see how you want things set up. Mm -hmm. But it's going back to that acceleration clause. And, and it's a weird little dance. And I'm sure you've played this before, right? Where, mm -hmm. where the mortgage brokers and, and the bankers, you know, they, they, they know that it's there, right? They, mm -hmm. they know that it's there. 
but they know it's not really an issue. So it's kind of like, it's kind of like, hey, if you have an LLC and put it back in, wink, wink, that, that's fine. Mm-hmm. Some will even straight up say that. Mm-hmm. But other ones are just kind of like, I, we can't, you know, like it has to be this for, yeah. for, for the loan. Um, but yeah, the, with, with LLCs, kind of the down, downside to them, there is a little bit more maintenance. And, and that is part of it. So it is a little kind of game, if you want to call it, where... Mm-hmm. If you're going to be financing, you may have to transfer out of the LLC back into your name individually to get the financing, and then um, and then put it back into the LLC after, mm-hmm. you know, if allowed. I'll say, you know, if if allowed, and make sure you understand the risk and and all those things. Yeah. So, Very cool. but, but um, I I guess what I wanted to say to kind of finish it off mm-hmm. is. So my world, estate planning, start with the trust. People get overwhelmed by these complex structures, you know, and these, you know, they want to create these, uh, you know, big old behemoth things. But I say, start with the trust. Once you own some assets, like like Mm -hmm. a primary residence and uh, make sure your family's protected that way. Um, You don't need an LLC to start doing real estate. It's not, um, it's not necessary to get started. But once you own some properties, then, then at least consider it. And, and, and weigh the, you know, the expense versus the benefits and, and those things. Um, but yeah, that, that, that's what I want to say. You don't, don't, you don't need one for every property. It's not, um, it's not mandatory. Are there benefits? Yes. Is there a cost to those benefits? Yes. So, yeah. The last thing I want to say, and I said this in the other episode, um, entity structures is a business for some folks. I have seen some wildly complicated entity structures, multiple states, multiple entities being pitched at events to people who own nothing. I've seen people sign up for $10,000 entity structures that I can't even remember. They are so complex. Folks, you don't need those out of the gate. Maybe they make sense later, but don't waste your seed capital doing that. that. That might make you feel good. That might make you feel like you're taking action. Essentially, you're doing is lighting stuff on fire because if you have nothing in it, what have you really done? Is that fair? Yeah, I agree, hundred percent. So um, wait until there's enough assets where where it justifies that expense. Perfect. And, and not just the ten thousand dollars, like all the time, right? You're gonna you're gonna have extra time in your life, uh, taxes every year, you know, of uh, uh, the the annual maintenance. Yeah. It's- yeah, some of these things, Rylas, I've seen is, yeah, it's just not good. So Rylas, if somebody wanted to call, call you, uh, either get a probate going or set up estate planning and all of that, trusts in California, Arizona, how do you want them to reach out? So danalegalhelp.com, that's my law firm. So you can reach out to me that way. Um, my team can help you um, set up your own estate plan or if you are if you're, um, need help with a probate or trust administration situation. Very cool. Thanks, Rylas. Appreciate you. All right. Thanks, Michael. Mm-hmm.